In this video, I'll demonstrate the features of the stroke panel in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'm going to organize my layers, and this layer was using the Reflect tool, so I'll rename it. And then at the bottom here, I'll add a new layer, and this layer will be our stroke panel layer. Then I'm going to demonstrate the stroke panel using the facial features of the creative character. So I'm going to select the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and over in the layers panel, I'm going to click on this little blue square, which will help me drag all of the facial features into the new layer. Turning on and off the visibility verifies that they are all in that layer. Next, I'm going to bring up the stroke panel either by clicking here or I can go to the control panel, click on window and choose stroke. And these three lines are the icon shortcut for the stroke panel. If you need to expand, you can click on these arrows to see more options. And if you don't want it to keep closing on you, you can grab this tab and move the panel into this side frame and collapse the other panels. You can change the weight or the thickness of a stroke by changing the number of points. And in typography, the point is the system that's used to measure things like font size, leading, etc. And since typefaces are made of lines, I assume that's why strokes also use points for measuring instead of pixels or inches. So you can type in the exact number going from very, very small to very, very large. So large, in fact, that I'll command minus sign to show you the whole screen and see how large that really is. And I'll settle back to one point for the outer part of the eye for now. Next, I'm going to click on the eyelashes and demonstrate line caps, which are the ends of open lines. The butt cap, fun name, I know, creates squared ends. A round cap creates semicircle ends, and a projecting cap creates squared ends that extend half the line width beyond the end of the line. And for the next set of options dealing with corners, I'm going to just scroll over and use my shaper tool to sketch out the shape of a square, giving me some corners to demonstrate these options. A join is where a straight line takes a turn, so a corner. So a miter join is going to create pointed corners and a round join will create rounded corners. And then the bevel join creates squared off corners. With the miter join, you can use this number to change the shape of the join from the mitered to the beveled. I'm going to come back to alignment in a moment. And I'll go over to my pencil tool. I'm going to draw a necklace for my character and turn it into a dashed line. You can specify the length of the dash versus the gap in between. And you can adjust the weight of those dashed lines. You can also adjust the corners of your dashed lines. So let me show you that back with our square. You can have the corners be equally spaced out or you can offset the corners. And you can also change the line caps as well. I don't need the square anymore, so I'll just delete that and then zoom out and scroll down. Next, I'll use the pencil tool to draw out a stroked line and I will use this to give her some stylish earrings. In the stroke panel, you have some arrowhead options and you can decide how the start and the end styles are for your stroked lines with arrowheads. And I don't think Adobe thought this feature would be used to make earrings, but why not be creative and unique? So I'll choose that for the start and maybe one of these options for the end, they are, there are a lot of different fun choices here that you can play around with. Next, I'm going to grab the nose and then over in the stroke panel, I will go through some of the width profiles. So you can use these preset width profiles to vary the width of your strokes. And some of them are really, really fun, different styles that work perfectly for the nose. I also think that some of these profiles would look really great for the ears. So I'm going to select both of the inside stroke lines for the ears and choose one of the profiles 
to change those lines up and give them a bit more interest. I'll select the lines of the mouth for this next demo, and I want to show you that you can make your own varied stroke widths using the width tool. So that tool is actually over in the toolbar, and how it works is that you can click on an anchor point, these little squares, and you can drag the stroke either in or out to change the weight just at that point. You can also add anchor points to the stroke and then pull in or out the width. And once you see the plus sign next to the cursor, that's where you would click and drag to add that point. You can hold the shift key and you can select multiple anchor points and drag them in or out at the same time. And you can go back and adjust the width you just changed by going to the end point, which is called the handle. And you'll see this wavy line next to the cursor. Then you can click and drag to adjust that width. And finally, I'd like to show you how you can add multiple strokes to a single object. I'll select the center oval of the eye, which I'm gonna turn into the iris and the pupil and bring up my appearance panel. So I'll choose window and then appearance panel. This little sunshine is the icon shortcut. The appearance panel, I also don't wanna close, so I'm just gonna move over and lock it into this panel here. This shows you all the strokes, fills, different graphic styles or effects that have been added to that particular object. And down in this corner, you can add another stroke or fill layer. So with it selected, you can then adjust the color. So I can do this drop down and toggle through different eye color choices. And I'd like to bring the outer circle of the eye to the front. So I'm gonna click on it and then right click and arrange and bring that to the front. And just like I've organized my layers here, I can do that in the appearance panel. So I can bring this blue stroke click and drag it down below, drop it. So you can rearrange your order of strokes and fills in the appearance panel as well. You can add an effect to each of these strokes going down here and clicking on FX. And I will choose the artistic and the palette knife just as an example. So it brings up this screen here. You can adjust the fit so that you can see a bit better the effect and how it's being applied to the eye. And you can make your changes to that effect in this area here. So I'll click OK. And that's the effect now added to the iris. If you want to delete something in this panel, just click on it and then hit the trash can and you can remove that. I'm going to temporarily turn off the visibility of the outer circle just so that we can focus on the different strokes of the inner circle. And I'll go back and demonstrate the align stroke option. Take a look at the blue stroke. It's a closed path, so I can align it along that path. The align stroke to center option means that half of the weight of the stroke is going to be on either side of that path. So half of six is three, so three points of the blue is on the outside of the path and three points of the blue is on the inside. You can align the stroke to the inside so that all six points are inside that path, or you can align the stroke to the outside so that all six are on the outside of that path. I'm going to choose inside so that it looks more like the iris of the eye. And I'll turn back on the visibility of the outside of the eye and scooch the iris and pupil over just a tad for better placement. And then I'm going to select the eyelashes and I'll change up the profile so that the width of those stroke lines is a little bit different. And finally, I'm going to use the shaper tool to add a little white circle just as that little light of reflection brings the eye to life a little bit. And I'll zoom out back to full screen so we can see the effect of these new strokes. And I obviously need to reflect her other eye and make some fine tune adjustments. So I'll be right back. And there we go, that's much better. All right, so this is a perfect time to save our work. I'll go to File, Save As. I'll save it to my Creative Cloud files in a folder for this class. And I name it my first name, last initial underscore. This is unit 02.3. This is our stroke panel. I will click Save and OK. 
So that is how you use the stroke panel to add line variety to your project in Adobe Illustrator.